we worship you. We exalt, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience, God. I am that I am, ancient of days. We give you all glory and adoration. We exalt, we magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can we do justice to the word as we share it on every platform? Let's share it on our platforms and let God be God in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience, God. You are God all by yourself. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. God bless you as you share this word. Let it begin to go around. And let the name of the Lord be glorified. In the name of Jesus. I thank God for your life. Oh, Lakata Sikata Barikana Mamama. Let's just begin to worship God. Adore him for he is God. Hallelujah. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father. Have your way that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. From generation to generation, you remain the same. You, are, you cannot change, not today, not now, forever and ever. You are God all by yourself. That's what the word said. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. We give you all honor. Have your way, O Lord. O Rabaga Sikata Bababa. Mikata Raba Shikata Baba. Le Bagasiko Toborika Nama Shikata Bababa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' unfailing name, we have prayed. Amen. The word said that God is a mighty God. And there is none that is he cannot do. There is nothing impossible with him. God is a God of all possibilities, all grace, all anointing, all power. Everything returns back to him. So as we use that, I want you to begin to thank him for this opportunity that you have today to come to his presence after we have had a long week. And, and we are here today again to begin a fresh week. We want God to be glorified in our life in every opportunity that we have because he is God. I don't know what you are going through, but the word for us today is, are you planted? You know, a lot of us tend to know about God, but we don't know God. And it's not to put anybody down or whatever your ordination or consecration is, but what we have to understand is that God is a God of process. There is always a process of becoming. And that process is what a lot of Christians have not been able to articulate, you know, in their journey as a Christian. The Christian journey is not a cakewalk. It's not what we just do for some time. It's something that you do and do it continually and God will be glorified. And when God has sent you to a place, God expects you to stay there until you get another approval to move. God is not a God that deals with prodigals and vagabonds. God like process. And it doesn't matter where God has placed you in, in life, whether it is in the ministry or in job, you have to appreciate that. And I love the song that says, I will praise you while I'm waiting. The time of waiting is very, very critical with the Christendom. A lot of Christians don't understand waiting anymore. The Bible said, have you not heard? Have you not seen? The everlasting God, he, the Bible said, he fainted not. Neither is there any searching of heart with him. He, he does not worry. But the Bible said, there that wait upon him, young men shall faint. But there that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. That is the God that we serve. The Bible says you shall mount up with wings at an eagle, but wings will not come. You will, your strength will not be renewed. 
until you wait. So how long is you are waiting? Some people give God an ultimatum. Say, God, if you don't show up in the next two months, then I will know that you are not for me. I will do something else. Let me tell you, God is everywhere. Even the devil acknowledges him. The devil was created by him. The devil serves him. So you can't threaten God. You can't be angry with God. There's a song in Igbo that if you are angry with God, will you beat him up? Will you beat him up? If you are angry with God, it doesn't matter how ang angry you are, can you beat up God? You can't. So why not just hold on to yourself and stay as he has called you and do what he has asked you to do? If you cannot change the status quo, you can't even change your own lifestyle or change anything in your life. What do you think you can do if you're angry with God? Do you want to just go and join the devil for just joining sake? The devil will give you worse. The Bible call him the thief. He commits to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But we have a God that can do all things. And he has proven it from time to time, generation to generation. God has shown his ability, capacity, capability that he can do all that. Let us pray. The Bible says the entrance of the world giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In the name of Jesus, we bring ourselves this hour as a living sacrifice that you look on us with your mercy. Let your glory come upon us. Lord, give us utterance that we shall speak the word of God undiluted. Let the word of God come expressly. Let it come accompanied with power. Let it come with transformation. Let it come all of our to bring a new revelation in our lives. Let it come to bring direction, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, you are God. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared to you. We thank you, Lord, Father. We take authority over this vicinity and proximity. We take authority over the airways that we are broadcasting from the byways and the freeways. We take authority over this medium. We take authority over the city of Lebanon, the county of Gwinnett, and the state of Georgia. We take authority over United States of America. We take authority, oh Lord Father, over the seaways. And all the nations of the earth, we commit them unto thy hand. Everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice, let God be God in your life. Let God be God in your family. Let God be God in everything that you do, that you will not have a reason to look for him. He will show up at the time that you want him, at the time that you need him. You will always experience him in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, hold us that we may not fall. Hold us strong and firm and bring us back to the knowledge of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man come to my father except by me. So we, we know that we have a way with Jesus. We have truth with him and we have life with him. In John 10, 10, he said, I have come that you should have life and have it in abundance. I release abundant life to you today. Receive an abundance of life. A life that is worth living. A life that is from God, a life that is from above. John 3, 31, said he that cometh from above. It's above all. Let the power from above come upon you right now. That you begin to do things, not from the, the earth, but things that are divine and heavenly. Receive the grace to manifest God in your life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The word for us today is, are you planted, planted, planted? You know, God talks about fruits and plants, and it uses it to depict man. I told you that the fruit of the Spirit can only happen when you have been planted. No 
no no plant gets fruit if it's not in a place you can be moving a plant from one place to the other and they, they get fruit it doesn't happen that way it takes time for growth to happen growth is something that you have to nurture you have to cherish it you have to be patient with it that's why the bible says the fruit of the spirit is love patience long suffering it, you can only have fruit when you have waited where you have been with god the prodigal son left home and because he left in Luke 15, what he could have got naturally as the son of the man, he lost it. He wasted years. But the Bible says when he came to himself, he said, I will go back to my father. And I will say, Father, I am not worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of your hired servants. A lot of Christians have to come back and say, God, make me one of your hired servants. You know, the difference between the, the, the prodigal and the brother, the brother has been with God. You see, when the brother came back and he was not happy for his father throwing that big party and lavish party for his younger brother that wasted the, their resources, the father says something to him. He said to him clearly, he said, you have been with me, but your brother has not. You have been with me, but your brother have not. You know what it means for God to recognize you being in his presence? The word says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. You have been with me. You have been with me. How many of you have been with God? Being with God is not just being in every way that God has been mentioned. God wants to see you in a place. You must be planted. Let's go straight to the word in the book of Acts chapter 1. Not Acts, Psalm 1 verse 1. The book of Psalm chapter 1 verse 1. It's a blessed is the man, the man, the woman, the person that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. The Bible says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. So one time a day is not enough. If you are that man, you have to meditate in the law, meditate in the world, day and night. At least the minimum is twice a day. We know how the Bible talked about the devil in Revelation 12. That the accuser of the brethren who accused them day and night. Right now, God is giving us the, 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 one of the criterias to come. That you must come to him in the day and in the night. It's preferably in the morning and in the, in the evening or before you go to bed. But you must meditate day and night. But look at verse 3, which is where we use as our emphasis today. He said, and he shall, and they shall, and she shall. It's not one person. It can be a community. It can be a collective people. But whoever is that man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. You can see that the three positions of a living person is there. The standing position, the sitting position, and the walking position. He said, and he shall be like a tree that is planted. Are you planted? That's the word. Are you planted by the rivers of water? You remember what Jesus said to the woman? He said, give me to drink, for I will give you living water. And the word said, out of your belly shall flow the rivers of living water. You shall be like a tree that is planted by the river of water. Are you planted by the river of water today? You shall be like the tree that is planted. The word is, are you planted? If you are planted, then you are ready. You are ready ready because in the planting of you being stable in a place staying in where you are called paul said it in a different way let every man stay in their calling stay where you are called stay in the position of your uh, ordination stay in the place of your expression god will meet you at the place of your work the bible says, god bless the works of our hands when you move around, you gallivant. You don't stay in a place. I'm not talking about being static in life, but staying in your in your in, in what you are called to do. So.
Some people have done in one year, they, have, they will be indulged in five, 10, 20 businesses. It's not like they have some businesses running, but they start something today. They never finish it. They go and start something else. When you are always starting, you will never see growth. Life is about time. For the Bible said, as long as the earth remains, see time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night, they shall not cease. This is a natural law. Time is the difference between the seed and the harvest. Time is what heals every wound. But many people don't want to give it time. You just want to be planted today. You are uprooted and you are planted somewhere. You are uprooted and you are planted somewhere. When you keep moving around, you can never see growth. It's not a cause, but this is the word of God. So the Bible says, he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth. Look at what happened to that tree. So if you are planted, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wing as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So when you are planted by the rivers of water, which is the word of God, then you shall bring forth fruit in your seasons. Your leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever you do out there shall prosper. So you want to prosper? You have to stay in a place. Stop making the house of God a revolving door. You move out from this fellowship, you join another fellowship. You move out from this commission, you get into another commission. You are always moving. You are always moving. You are never, you, the moment you, you feel that you have been chastised, then you are fleeing. Oh, lakita rabba shikata bababa. Or you feel that you have not got what you wanted. You want to be a baby all the time. You want to be looked upon. You want every time you see, you shout or cry, then everybody will be rally around you. You just want all the attention to be in front of you. Let me tell you, you are not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit can be at many places at the same time, but you are a man. Stay in the place of your ordination and your calling. That is where God will meet you. And some of you, you know, the people you see, you admire their anointing. I see sometimes I go minister, people want to say, oh, can I touch you, man of God? They are struggling to get something that belongs to me. If you think that by touching a man of God or taking his handkerchief or filling his shoe, that you can get it by impartation, what he has labored for years to get, you are joking. We have people that see us every day. Ask every pastor. He has family members, wife and children that have access to his body every day. And some of them are not as great as their father. It comes by serving that oil. The anointing you, you serve is what will bless you. I take it even to business. A lot of people they get into business, they just jump from one business to the other. How can you get the fruit? Every business that you have learned, there is a trick in that business. If you stay long enough, you will discover the secret. And sometimes the secret cannot be explained to you. And you ask people that have been there, what is the secret of this business? They say, well, there's no secret. In fact, one day I was listening to Oprah Winfrey and she said, one of the greatest secrets of being wealthy is that there is no secret. And it was funny, but that is it. You cannot physically see the secret. The secret of success is diligence. The word of God says, have you seen a man diligence in what he does? He will not be hanging around with men, men or you know, loafers or people that are not good in the society. He shall stand before princes, great men. Have you seen a man diligent in his job, in his business, in his ministry, in his life, in anything he does? People want to get into marriage and get everything in marriage in one year. No, it doesn't work that way. That's why you see that in America here, where we are, that the, 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 the average time to be married is two years. Many marriages break in six months in one year. In fact, one day, a man of God, I was in a program and a woman was trying to talk about what the husband did to her. And the man said, how long were you married? He said, two weeks. And everybody began to laugh. 
but it's not a laughing matter. He said, but we dated for six years and you were married for two weeks and the marriage ended and you keep complaining. How can you get the fruit of that marriage in two weeks? There's a process of becoming. Unless you are planted, you cannot get fruit. A tree, a mango tree, for instance, if you plant a mango tree and you keep moving that, that, that the moment you see a stem shoot out, you, you, you transplant it to somewhere else and keep transplanting it, that will never become a tree. It will be malnourished and it will not grow well and eventually it might dry up or die or even if it stays, you just, you just see flowers in it. There will be no tree. You have to plant it in a place and leave it there. If you move it one or twice, you keep it in a permanent place and you continue to water it. You continue to put manure on it. You continue to prune it. You continue to, to do all that. It takes six years for you to see a complete tree before a fruit comes out on the seventh year. If you do it organically. So, but that mango tree can be in your family for your lifetime. And many of us, we plant something in six months you are expecting a harvest from it the bible say the fruit of the spirit is love many of you don't have love and you see it is so common in christendom that people are so wicked and why because we don't want to go through the process jesus looked at the people that were killing him and he said father forgive them for they know not what they do you just trample upon a christian or you 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 you, you somehow cross their path the whole world we hear, they'll put it on social media. They are going to try to kill you. They will demonize you. They will do everything. And they say, oh, I don't hate. What are you telling me? One of the symbols of this journey that we are in is love. The Bible says God is love. But you can't develop love if you are not planted. That does not mean that the person that is giving love or the person that is loving others that people don't hurt you. You go through some pain sometimes. People that you have watered, people that you have ministered to, people you have been a blessing to, they will, they will rubbish it and they just quit. But that will not change you because you are not doing it because of what they will do for you. You just keep loving on people. I like the way John Maxwell put it in one of his programs that I watch. He said when he was going out as a young pastor and the, the, he said, I say, I'm going to pray with you. The father was a minister. The father prayed for him. And the father said, I'm going to advise you. And I want you to take these three points very, very important in your life as you go on your journey as a pastor. And John Maxwell said he was listening to the father. And the father said, as you are going to be in the business of people, which is preaching, you have to love people. The guy said, okay, well, number one, love people. And the father said, you know, the business you are doing is the business of people. When you are in ministry, you are dealing with human beings. Number two is love people. And he said, but number two and number one, he said, yes, love people, number two. I said, okay, number three, you know you are going to be dealing with a lot of people. And as you go into the city, not in the, in the county when they were, they were in the countryside, he said the church where his father was pastoring, there were about 300 people. And the whole community, the whole of that community is about a thousand something. So maybe three or four churches there. So if you count it, divide the 300 by three churches, and you see that the remaining are just people that are moving around that don't have a place. So he said, number three is love people. And he said, that, but you, this is number one. He said, number one, number two, number three. That is what is in the business that you are doing. If you have to be in the business of people, you must love people. You must love people. He said, tell this to your children, your wife. As you grow older, you will understand what I said. And he left. He said, he didn't understand it. But as he began to deal with people, People will come and go in your life, but you have to have love. That love is not a love that has condition. It's not a love that has an attachment. It's a love that is unconditional, which is called the agape love, the love that Jesus had for us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So what we are saying today is the only way to grow in this kingdom, to become mighty, to be fulfilled, to be who God wants you to be, to become a nation, and nations come out of you, is you must be planted. You cannot be gallivanting and roaming from place to place. You cannot be uprooted and planted, uprooted and planted. You will not grow that way. You will not grow. I'm telling you this as an experienced man of God. In the little time I've been in this world, I have seen God in the mountain and I've seen in the valley. If you are doing the things of God and the will of God, whether you are walking, 
or you are doing whatever, but you are committed to it and you stay there, God will always visit you. It is, it is, it is a certainty that you will see God. You will experience God. Hallelujah. Look at John the Baptist. The Bible said, and the child grew and walked strong in the spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. He was in that place. He knew who he was. He stayed there. He grew. He waxed strong in the spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing forth unto Israel. Where have you been? How many of us can stay in a place for 10 years, 15 years? Do you know that when Moses left Egypt, he went into the house of Jethro. He was in the same place for 40 years. And God called him from the burning bush as he was taking the ships of Jethro, the priest of the Midianites. God called Moses and said, Moses, Moses, pull off your shoes for where you are is a holy ground. Moses saw another dimension of God in that day. Many of us want to have revelation and encounter with God. And you think that by just seeing a man of God say, I hail you. Or you see a man of God and you, you go and get some money and put in his hand that those things will rub upon you. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. Impartation does not come that way. You can receive healing through that path. You can receive some kind of blessings. But what the man is carrying, what makes up the man, is not what you get by touching that person. Remember the woman that taught Jesus? She got healed. But she did not collect the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because that woman, we never heard about her anymore. When she took that healing, she ran out of the church. A lot of people come to God and receive and run away. And what happened? The devil wait for them on the other side and take it back. When you have understood who you are, you stay in your calling. The guy, the Bible said the, the child, the child grew. Before you can experience growth, you must be planted. So the question again is, are you planted? The child grew and worked strong, not in the world, but in the spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. Oh, Labaga Sikata Baba, where will God meet you when God comes to see you? Do you have an altar where you can call upon Him around you, in your family, in your house? Do you have a place that you can experience God in any form or way? You must, you must be planted. I, 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 want, I want us to understand it. I talked about it yesterday, talking about the place of your ordination. I say, if you, if you discover that place, you stay there. And it doesn't matter what happens, you stay there, God will visit you there. Jesus told the, 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 the children of Israel, he said, tarry in Jerusalem. In, in Luke chapter 24, if you look, look from verse 48 down to 49 and 50, until the spirit of God is, you are endued with the Holy Ghost. You are, uh, 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 Jesus, the way he put it, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with the power from high. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But the place was a specific place. Many of us, we have done 20 businesses in one year. And you can do that if you have the resources and the capacity. But now you don't have capacity. You don't even have resources. So you start every time you are starting. Every time somebody see you, you are starting. You are starting a new relationship. You are starting a new business. You are starting something. It's not a good life. You cannot grow that way. Stay in your calling. Stay in that place. If God has sent you to a man of God, sent you to a woman of God, sent you to a place of worship, you can listen to other men of God, but stay in that place. Your growth will come from your pastor. The Bible said, believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. Second Chronicle chapter 20, verse 20. And believe in his prophet or in your pastor, you shall prosper. Your prosperity is in the hand of your pastor. Your pasture is in the hand of your pastor. Hallelujah. John chapter 6, 44. No man can come to me except the Father which had sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. 
No man. Jesus said, you can't even come. Some people think you run from Shokoto to Sikata. You go from New York to California. You move from Atlanta to Florida. It doesn't change God. God is a God of all flesh. There is nothing that moves him. If you stay where you are, you remember the woman that, the, the, that Jesus met at the well in Luke chapter 4, in John chapter 4, actually. The woman was trying to bring politics and dogma to Jesus Christ. He didn't know that he was talking to, she was talking to the church itself. And she said, you Jews said we should come to Jerusalem to worship. And our ancestors worship in this mountain. Oh, And Jesus looked at her. She was trying to talk about geographical location. And she was not even grounded with God. She thought that by showing up in the place, that that thing would just fall into her. Jesus said, the time has come. And the time is now. That the true worshippers should not in Jerusalem, nor in this mountain, but worship God in spirit and in truth. You must know the God that you serve. Daniel eleven thirty two. They that know the God they serve. If you have not known him, desire to know him. Forget about how, whether you are going to be blessed. Jesus gave us the fastest way to succeed in life, in ministry, in, in everything. Matthew chapter 6, 33, write it down. It says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, whether you want good life, peace, joy, anything, long life, prosperity, all these things shall be added. But many times we want to take time to pursue things. We Okay, it's not working here. Let me go to this place. It's not working there. Let me go here. You change from one business to the next business. You are not focused. You study this. You come out of that. And before you know it, 20 years have passed and you are always beginning. Those 20 years, you can't get it back. Before you know another 10 years is gone, you are always beginning something. You can't get it back. 30 years of your life, if you might not sit to what you were before you started. Maybe you are in your 50s now. You are in your 60s. And you look at life, you say life has passed me by. A lot of people are in their 60s. Some are in their 70s. And they are looking back. 40 years that they wasted. Trying to do things that were not anything. Let me tell you, if you are not planted, you can never... Oh, Karaman, you can never see growth. Don't move around. Whether it's business, it's ministry. Some people have 20 pastors praying for them. What is that? That's confusion. You can, you can, you can love a minister of a man of God. You can adore a man of God. You can listen to them. You can get inspiration from them. You should have a place. You should have a pastor. You should have a man of God in your life. That is responsible for you. God cannot ask 20 people about you. Every pastor has people they are responsible for in spirit. And many of you don't know the nation that you are connected to. Because you are from this nation. Because the nation is the revelation that God gives to a man. When God told Abraham in Genesis 12. And God spoke to Abraham specifically. He said, get out from thy father's house. From thy kindred and from thy country. To a place I will show you. And I will bless thee. And I shall make thy name great. And you shall become a blessing. And God told him that I will make nation out of you. Abraham was a man. But God was seeing nations out of this man. The nation is, we are all those nations that came from Abraham. It's not the nation that has the name. People think that Abraham represents the nation of Israel. Israel is part of it. We are part of that nation. When you stay in a place and commit to that thing there is no way it is almost impossible the devil cannot even steal your blessings because the devil will discover that you know who you are the bible says the righteous shall be as mount zion that can never be moved the righteous shall be as what a stone a mountain that cannot be shaken. you are unshakable no shaking when the devil comes and beats you this way or that way you stand tall because you know who you are. Because you know the God you serve. It doesn't matter what you are going through. You are focused on God. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus. That's our Christian faith. The, faith is not, the Christian faith is not the substance of the things that we hope for. And the evidence of things that we are not seeing. That's the general faith. The Christian faith is Jesus Christ. Looking unto Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. The author and the finisher of our faith. You just focus on him. It's not good today, you just commit it onto his hand. It is not doing well today, you commit it onto his hand. After a while, 
God will see that your faith has been tried. You are not moving. You are not shaking. He knows that you know who he is. You know, you understand him. God will begin to show himself gradually to you. And before you know it, you start to hear God. Do you think that 40 years that Moses was walking in the wilderness and running around those mountains, God saw him in those 40 years. God knew his precious. God saw him and God said, Moses, Moses, pull off your shoes. For where you are standing is a holy ground. He has been walking on top of that mountain until God called him. Same as Joseph, when he was sold into slavery. Joseph did not say because I have been sold here and he would stay in the agony of what he has, is going through in life and complain to everybody. Joseph took life easy and he began to work hard in the house of Potiphar. Even though he was accused wrongly of rape and they threw him into the jail, he continued to work gracefully and patiently. It was his diligence and the joy of the, he stayed and he knew that the Redeemer lived. it. God showed up and brought him out and made him the prime minister in a foreign land. So we are talking about, are you planted? You cannot grow if you are not planted. Our emphasis is Psalm 1 verse 3. And it shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. If you are not in the place of planted, being a person that is stable and steadfast. Whether come rain, come shine, you are there. You will not see the growth you want in God. Unfortunately, I'm telling you. Jesus said, if I be lifted up in John chapter 12, 32, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will I draw men unto myself? You must be planted and begin to give glory to the name of Jesus. Lift him up. That is where he draws himself to you. When John was left in the wilderness, the Bible said, ah, look at that mama mama. John chapter 6, verse 44. He said, no man can come to me except the Father, which, which has sent me, Jesus said, draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. No man can come to me. You just stay in your calling and begin to acknowledge him. Then Jesus will reveal himself to you and you'll be drawn to God. It is only God that can bring man to himself. Anyone that you see that come to God, he didn't come by himself. You desire him, he will show himself to you. There is no way to study and know God. You can study about him, but God will decide where he wants you to know him. He will show you a dimension and that will become a revelation that will open your eyes. Oh, la baga si kataba. That's why Jesus said, if I be lifted up, if you begin to focus on me and lift me up, I will draw men unto me. I will. There's a man in the Bible, in the book of Colossians chapter 4, called Epaphras. This man, the Bible says he was behind the scene. Nobody knew him, but he was the one that was controlling the church in the spirit. He was the one that God has given the ability to open doors for ministries and ministers. The Bible says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. He was the one that was behind the scene, praying for the apostles, praying for the church. They didn't see him preach. Some of you, if you have not been given mic, you change church, you go to five churches, and before you know it, you are on the altar singing and preaching. But the revelation you are working with is a revelation of a man that you have been with before. And many of you will think that you are not with that man. And when you, when you, when God reveals Himself, you will see that you are standing in the nation of another man. Oh, Lakata Sikata Baba, that you couldn't catch your own vision. It's the revelation of a man you are running. A Epaphras was just behind the scene, praying fervently for the perfect and complete of all men. He was praying for the church, and the church was moving forward because of a man. We are going to pray. Revelation chapter 2, 26. The Bible said in verse 26 of Revelation 2, and he that overcometh and keepeth my work unto the end, to him will I give power over nations. You don't, Jesus say, you don't keep my word sometime, my work. You keep it to the end. 
it, you know, one thing about following is you follow to the end. Paul said, follow me as I follow Jesus. You don't follow and quit. You, when you begin to follow Christ, you follow him to the end. He that keepeth my walk unto the end. The Bible said, him will I give power to overcome not some people, but nations. When you're talking about nations, you're talking about ideologies. You are talking about civilizations. Because some people can, you can have a whole collective of nations having one ideology. Like if you look at the West, there's, they are tending towards a, a, a particular kind of ideology. So when God is saying you are going to overcome nations, you will overcome the ideology of the West or the ideology of Africa or the, the, the nations of the Asian continents. That is what God is going to give you power to overcome. And he shall rule. That is when you begin to rule with the rod of an iron. As the vessel of a potter shall there be broken to shelves. Even as I received of my father. I will give you nations. And we're talking about the nations that God gave to Abraham. When he has deemed it fit, God said, I will make you father of nations. And we are trying to pick and choose which nation Abraham is the father. Abraham is the father of nations. Every nation that called the name of the Lord, we are all the offspring of Jesus. And Jesus is joined us. We are joined here with Christ and Christ to Abraham. That's why we partake of that Abrahamic covenant. In the, in the book of Galatians, that's where you see our genealogy down to Abraham. Redemption began with the man. God wanted to redeem the world. God called him out and said, come out of your nation. Come out of their father's house and of your kindred. So he was nationless. He was father houseless. He, was, he has no root from that time. God separated him from where he was coming from. See, I will build a new civilization with you. So everyone that overcomes, God gives you power over nations. Look at the people that he called and gave some, some, uh, some, some uh, what's it called? Miners or pounds. In the book of Luke 19, we don't have to tell the whole story, but the Bible says when Jesus came, in verse, Luke 19 verse 14, uh, 17, he said, and he said unto him, well done, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. The guy was giving five um, uh, minus and he turned it into ten. And the man said, well, you guys are doing very well. I will put you in charge of ten cities. I will put you in charge of ten cities. God is looking for someone that will come with a great revelation so that he can put you over nations. Collective of nations, you shall become over it. That is where God is going. The authority that you receive from God is not to buy a, a new car or live in a big house. Those things are primary to what God is putting you in charge. That's why we are looking in, at God and we are, we, are, we, are, we are commonizing God to our personal needs. God is bigger than your needs. God is bigger than your family and your generation. God is bigger than your, your tribe. God is bigger than the nation you were born in. If you want to see things in the prisons of God, you have to see it broad. You have to see it bigger. That is the only time that you will begin to have the vision of where God is taking you. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Isaiah 66 verse 8, the Bible says, who had such a thing? This is a question. Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Nothing happens in one day. Even God did not create heaven and earth in one day. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall nations be born at once? No. It takes time. That's why you must go through process. A lot of us are so in a hurry to bypass process and go and cut short. There is no shortcut to life. Everything that you receive with a shortcut, you pay the price on the other side. It's either you pay now or you pay later. So what do you want? You want to pay now and go through the process and receive it and be debt free. Or you want to get it and pay later. When you are paying later, you don't know what the interest rate will be. I'm not talking about physical cash, but the interest rate of life. 
The devil can give you blessings now and you're supposed to live for 50 years. The devil will take away 25 years of your life and cut you short. That is the pay later. Have you seen a man diligent in his business job? He shall stand before great men, not men. men. He said, who had such a thing and who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day or shall nations be born at once? No. For as soon as Zion, the church, travails, she brought forth her children. Are you going to travel today? God is waiting for that man, that woman, those people that will begin to travel in the spirit. That is the people that will give birth to nations, begin to give birth to civilizations, begin to give birth to ideologies. What we have now, we are trying to see what people that came before us, the patriots, the, the foundations that they laid, we have not even accessed all that. And we are thinking that in this dispensation that God should move again until the, the, the house of the Lord begin to sit on top of other mountains. We cannot move the hand of God. We have to take over the, 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 the civilizations of education and religion and finance and governance. When you're talking about establishing a new government, you must bring down the old. For you to have a nation that is attached to the power of God upon your life. You must have an ideology or a civilization that is greater than what is there. Why is it that the whole world is clamoring towards the, the ideology of the American, the American dream, the American way of life? America is not just a country. It's not just a collective of people. America is an ideology and it was sold to the world if you can come up with a revelation of God that is bigger than what people see, the world will follow you. But we don't want to pay the price of waiting upon the Lord. For the Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. The word say, arise. I don't know where you are today. You have to begin to rise up and begin to be planted in a place. I told you yesterday, you have to be planted locally so you can spread globally. Your root must go down and spread wide. Then you begin to have a bigger tree. You can see a tree that is planted, that is gonna be great. It must have roots that went down because if, if not so, when the weather come, when there is hurricane or tornado, that tree will fall to the ground. You want to plant yourself and be rooted in the world be rooted in the things of God. Let God become your civilization. Let the Holy Spirit begin to take place in your life. Begin to release yourself into the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the, is the controller of different dimensions of God. I told you that the Spirit of God has seven dimensions. The Bible says the seven Spirit of the Lord. If God can allow you to be, you to be revealed to one or two of his dimensions, Everything Solomon did on earth, the Spirit of gave him, the Spirit of God gave him two things: wisdom and understanding. That is another two dimensions that made this man to be the greatest man that ever lived. He became the richest. He never asked for wealth, but there's a dimension that God will give you today. You can say, God, give me might, and you will be so mighty. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God shall rest upon him. Many of us are running around with the Spirit of God. And we are just walking with one dimension of the Holy Ghost. You need to get the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, wisdom, the spirit of knowledge and understanding, and the spirit of the fear of God. You must be planted to receive such. God can never give you something if you are always moving. You cannot be found in a place. Every time God is looking at you in, in Georgia, God is seeing you in New York. If God wants to see you in New York, you have moved. You are in California. God cannot and trust anything on you because where will you go the next time you must be planted locally so you can spread globally in the name of jesus christ oh kanama shikata baba ba. begin to thank god say god plant me the bible said psalm 1 verse verse 3 that's our focus today psalm number one verse 3 he said and he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever it does shall prosper. 
But it, it, he didn't start with prosperity. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I want you to begin to pray. Say, God, plant me. Or stand in the way, in the way of sinners. Nor seated in the seat of the scornful. There are three things this man is not doing. Blessed is the man that walketh not. He does not walk in the way, in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor, nor does he stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of comfort. The Bible says his delight is in the law of the Lord. He meditates on it day and night. When you are doing that, you don't move around doing it. You don't move church to church. You don't move from pastor to pastor doing it. You can have 20 pastors that you know, but you have a pastor. The Bible says, but he shall be, he shall be like a tree that is planted, planted by the river of water. The word of God will water you and I bring it forth fruit. Today, begin to bring forth every fruit of your life. Let it begin to manifest. And the Bible said, his leaf also shall not wither. You will not be in drought. You will not be in dryness. And whatsoever he does, today, let the prosperity of the Lord engulf you. Let the blessings of God overwhelm you. Let God shower you with blessings. As you are planted, as you go through the process of life, as you wait upon the Lord, as your strength is being renewed, the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You don't put on the armor of God moving around. You put it on in a place. You stay and water the, 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 the life that you want. And you pray yourself into greatness. And there's a, there's a place there. He said, day and night. Day and night. So, for you to be great, God gave a man, Joshua ch chapter 1, verse 8. God spoke to Joshua after Moses died. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth. This is a direct counsel from God. A direct advice. He said, thou shalt meditate on it day and night. Then thou shalt observe to do all that is written in it. Then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous. And thou shalt have good success. Let me tell you something. There is no way, there's no shortcut to anything in life. If you don't pay now, you pay later. There's one investment that is called IRA in America. Individual retirement account for those people that are not having a 401k from their job. But if, if you want to do the simple IRA, you just keep contributing money. And at the time of your retirement, the government will tax you. Based on your tax bracket, the government might take 40% of everything you have. And that is a disaster. But at the time you are contributing it, you are seeing money. You just you are the, you are not paying any taxes on it. That is pay later. But there's what called rough IRA. I'm not talking investment here, but I want to tell you something. The work of God is not pay later. If you want to go that route, the devil can trick you into it and say, Don't worry, take everything for free. And the devil will not even tell you that there's a payment in the, the other side. When you work with God, you pay now. You pay now. There's a demand to work with God. Jesus has paid the price, but there are demands. If God wants you to just get up every day and pray for two hours, that's the demand that he wants you to do. If God wants you to live a life of a fasted life, you do that. You live, you know, some of us that pray all the time, we can't even say when we are fasting and when we are not because we are always in a fasting move. And that is not that somebody, it's not religious spirit. It is something that is part of your commission. You cannot but do it. There are people that God said, don't do a certain thing. It's not that that thing is wrong. But God wants you to, because of the, the, the revelation that he wants to give or commit into thy hand, he said, do this kind of thing. And you stay in that. Oh, Be planted today so that you can spread. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I want to pray with you if you have not received Jesus Christ. We are here because of you. The Bible said in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that he died and resurrected, we shall be saved. So I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior and I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. Hallelujah. I will see you all tomorrow. But I want you to be planted. Don't move around. Don't, don't be gallivanting so that you have, you have, your roots can go downward and begin to grow. I want you to grow in stature. 
and in the grace of God. If you look at what the Bible talked about, John the Baptist here, Luke chapter 1, verse 80, the Bible says, And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the desert until the day of his showing unto Israel. He stayed in a place and grew and grew and grew so that you can have some stature in the spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God bless you. I love you all with all my heart. But above all, Jesus loves you the more. I will see you tomorrow. Amen. God bless you.